Hi, my name is Colleen Purcell from the fall cohort of Grace Hopper at Full Stack Academy. Today I will be talking about user authentication with JSON web tokens using React Redux. So far in this intensive programming course, we've learned how to use Node, Express, SQLize with Postgres, ES6 syntax, as well as React Redux and a few other libraries. While building an e-commerce site that integrates those frameworks, I really enjoyed working on the React Redux components and thought that it'd be great to take a, a deeper dive into a related topic. User authentication was one of those more complex parts of the project and I decided to look at it uh, more. But instead of um, focusing on cookie authentication, uh, I decided to look at the alternative method of token authentication. The agenda today will start off with a discussion of the differences between cookies and tokens. And then I will examine how to use the bcrypt library to encrypt passwords, how to use tokens to authenticate user requests, and then look at passport strategies and middleware. So there are three main differences between cookies and tokens. Security data is either stored in the headers of a request as a cookie object on an otherwise stateless HTTP request or uh, as an authorization string. Cookies are unique to each domain for security purposes, so a less secure site cannot hijack your session. But the advantages of tokens is that they're more scalable for large applications, so you can authenticate users across domains. It's really useful uh, when you have a single API server used for both the mobile app and web application um, across domains. And that's why the user is trending towards token authentication. So let's look at uh, how the bcrypt library is used to encrypt passwords. Since it's bad practice to save a password as plain text in your database user model, we can salt the password and encrypt it uh, and save an encrypted version. The diagram shows how bcrypt creates a salt, which is just a randomly generated uh, string of characters, and then hashes it uh, with the plain text password using the salt before attaching it uh, with the hashed password into the model. This coding example shows how the bcrypt library's gensalt method is employed uh, before a user uh, is saved to the database. The method produces a salt that is fed into the hash method from the bcrypt library uh, within the callback, and the resulting hash is then uh, saved, saved in the user model. Once the password has been salted and hashed during sign up, on a subsequent sign in, the passwords are compared, as shown in the diagram. But there is no concept of decryption. So instead of unhashing the encrypted password to compare it, the plain text one is actually uh, encrypted for a more apples to apples comparison. The steps to remove the salt uh, from the encrypted password, and then the salt is used to hash the plain text password. The resulting hash password is then compared to the encrypted one from the database after the salt is removed. So it's not quite an encrypted to encrypted comparison, it's a hash to hashed comparison without the salt. We'll touch on a coding example of this uh, a bit further on. Next is how to authenticate user requests for protected content with JSON web tokens. A JWT is essentially an identifying piece of information that the user can include on all future requests in order to be authenticated. Uh, this diagram uh, is a diagram of how it works. You can take a user ID and combine or encrypt it with a secret string to produce uh, the JWT for a user. The user can then provide it back on subsequent requests in order to be authenticated, uh, but this won't work without the secret string. JWT Simple is a library used to create a token for a given user. During sign-in, after the user is authenticated, the token for user method creates an encoded token for the user. The encode method from this library uh, has a, a, the first argument of an options object, and uh, it has the sub key or subject, which is the user, and an IAT key or issued at time uh, property with the timestamp. The second argument is the user's secret string imported from the config.js file shown at the bottom right, which uh, you should add to your git ignore so that it will not be shared or leaked because uh, someone that got a hold of it could uh, use it to decrypt your token. Now let's 
take a look at the two uh, passport strategies um, that employ Bcrypt and JWT libraries. Passport uh, is a library that determines whether a request for an authenticated route is coming from a user who is authenticated. Uh, authent authentication can be determined by a range of strategies, like JWT, shown as the first, or with a email password local strategy, shown as the second. With the token strategy, a specific constructor is imported from the Passport library. The JWT strategy constructor takes an options object that has both the token and the key. The token is extracted from the header's authorization property, and the key is the secret string from your config file. The callback function of the JWT strategy takes a payload, which has the properties that were encoded onto it from the uh, token for user property in the bottom right. Um, this method puts the user ID on as a sub property, uh, which we touched on. Once the token has been processed, the, users, the sub's user ID is fed into the user model to find uh, the relevant user record. And lastly, uh, the final line of code is uh, where Passport is told explicitly to use the token strategy. Next is local strategy. Um, passport strategy number two uses the encrypted password for user authentication instead of the token. Uh, now we'll revisit uh, the coding example for when the user uh, returns to sign back in. Here's how the uh, local strategy works for logging in. Uh, we can use the passport local library and give the strategy the username, which is used to query for the saved user. Uh, when the user is found, the compare password method uh, from the user model definition is called. And that um, method that has been defined uh, on the user schema relies on the compare method from the bcrypt library to examine the two passwords. It takes the candidate password and the this password, uh, the one that is currently being tested and the one um, that has been hashed and saved in the database. Uh, now we'll wrap up by examining how these strategies uh, employ the Passport middleware. Passport direct, uh, directs the incoming requests towards one of the authentication strategies at hand. The Passport library uh, has an authentication method that takes the name of the strategy. So the uh, file in which the strategies have been defined is imported at the top, uh, require uh, services slash passports, um, and then uh, it sets, um, once the authentication method uh, receives the strategy name, it sets the session to false in order to prevent the default of setting up a cookie-based session. The second red box shows how the require auth strategy, in a sense, intermediates the route as a second argument before the response is sent. It serves as a type of pre-check before security information is provided, such as the super secret code of ABC123. <laughs> Similarly, the passport library's authentication method can be used to hook up the local strategy and employ it in the sign-in route. The require sign-in pre-check intermediates the sign-in route as the second argument. Only once the email and password are matched with what's on file in the database will the user receive his or her token uh, as shown in the bottom right sign-in function. That wraps up how Bcrypt, uh, JWT, and Passport libraries are used for authentication strategies.